In this video I want to show you how you can make the analog synth in Ableton Live sound rather distorted and crunchy like you could hear in the intro and I want to focus on doing this inside the synthesizer because of course you can always smash some distortion saturation plugins onto the synthesizer but you can also reach some state already before doing that and that's what I want to focus on in this video. If you're new here, let me quickly say hi. My name is Janis and on my channel you can find many videos about creative music production and also quite a good bunch of videos about making sounds with Ableton Live and particularly the analog synth. So in case you'll enjoy this video, you can already keep in mind that there's more to be found on my channel. So here I just loaded the analog synth in default setting and I also programmed some little quick sequence that doesn't sound too inspiring, but later with the kind of crunch, it sounds like some kind of funny little guitar riff. Of course with this sound it's just purely terrible, but we'll change it. So also for this example it's good to know that I worked with square waves because I don't work with them too often, but actually it's super fun. And I'm going to deselect the second oscillator for now, so we can just focus on one oscillator and the square wave. And also for the amplitude envelope let's make the release shorter. Also the sustain all the way up because we basically just want to have some gate type sound and also change the whole sound to monophonic so we don't have any weird overlap that sounds a bit confusing. So now we have this sound, still really bad, but the fun thing about square waves is that you can use something called pulse width modulation. And once you've selected a square wave, you're actually allowed to change the pulse width setting because if you have some sawtooth wave, for example, you're not allowed to do that because it's technically not possible. And now you can play around with the pulse width, which is really fun. And you see, if we increase it, it gets a bit more crunch. And generally, if you want to get really crunchy, I feel like the most potential is always in the square waves. It's also possible with the sawtooth waves, but I enjoy just uh, doing it with the square waves and playing with the width. Here, it's too much of this subtone. And here it's just some very thin blah, type sound. But around this area I enjoy it. And another great thing about the analog synth is that you can add either like a sub oscillator, which we are not going to do because we don't want to make the sound more muffly than it will be. Um, but you can imitate a sync setting, which because usually in synthesizers if you sync oscillators it means like you can't reach detune effects. Here you can still do that. It's more like some imaginative sync oscillator that creates together with this oscillator one in this case kind of overtones that are similar to the ones that you would create with like a usual synthesizer sync setting. And also it's just fun to browse through different ratio settings and see if it changes also the timbre to some nice point. So here it's all goofy. But here, all of a sudden, we also have some nice crunchy sound. And then there's one more thing you can try, which is applying some LFO to the pulse width modulation. So here I figured out three hertz is kind of a good setting, just with a sine wave. And then you just add, again, some additional vibe. Yes. Here it's really intense. So maybe I'll keep it around here for now. So for the second oscillator we're also going to select a square wave, it's actually already selected. And there's one thing that I like a lot, it's kind of both inspired by other lead sounds but also particularly by guitars, which is tuning the second oscillator 7 semitones higher, which is a perfect fifth. Because if you play power chords on a guitar and those kind of distorted sounds remind me a bit of this kind of guitar playing style, you play a fifth basically so you have the interval of a fifth in like lower registers and so here it would sound like this. And also for lead sounds it often works because the fifth for most things you would play sounds like in tune. There's just always one note if you're playing inside a scale where it doesn't work but you can manage to just not play that one. And it can just make the sound brighter, fatter, more aggressive because you add some kind of harmony that also creates more attention. And I really, really enjoy this and once we did this here, we can again play with the setting for pulse width and the sync. 
to see where we find some nice tone. Again, we also have to select the second LFO so we can apply it already, but first let's check the pulse width. I think around here. I guess also around here is good. Okay. By the way, if you're new to the whole world of synthesizers and would just generally enjoy some class that covers all the basics, explains all the most important things of synthesizers in just one compact format, I want to invite you to check out a class that I just released on my Skillshare profile. It's designed to show you the basic workflow of synthesizers and make you familiar with the most important parts, also independent from one specific plugin, so you can perfectly transfer it to whatever you're using. And with the link down below in the description, you can just register on Skillshare one month for free. Just try out this class, see if it's for you, and otherwise just cancel any time without any strings attached. And those are the things you can do for making the oscillator sound by itself, already kind of crunchy. And what we didn't use so far is the filter and here it becomes really interesting because right now we just have the amplitude envelope that opens the sound and nothing else is applied. But let's look at the filter because first of all you have a setting called filter drive and here we just select the strongest one which is ASIM3. And let's already see what this does to the sound. Maybe we have to dial back the level a little. Good. I like this and also then we can start playing a bit with the filter settings because resonance and cutoff frequency have some nice interplay at certain points. So what I suggest is bringing the resonance to about 50%. You can do this however you want but that's just a good starting point for my taste. And then you start playing a bit with the frequency Nope, so bringing it down and also I didn't mention yet that I just put the sustain to 100% as well So we don't really use some filter envelope. We just use the kind of filter sound And so let's see what happens if we bring this down We kind of get this interesting touch here, but right now it's a bit too much for my taste. So let's play also a bit with the resonance. And it doesn't really change the timbre, just the amount. So then what I would suggest is bringing down a bit the envelope amount because the envelope is actually still applied. It's not doing any shaping or giving any movement, but if we decrease the amount of the filter envelope, we can also make this a little less strong. You almost get some kind of lo-fi guitar. And here it's of course totally up to taste how you do this and um, depending, maybe you use some other synthesizer, this will always vary a lot. You can also try another filter type. Actually I like this. You can also add keyboard tracking to make it get a little brighter if it goes up. Although the melody is kind of low so it doesn't affect it so much here, but you have some nice lead sound. That also works well in higher registers because right now we just have this low sound, but actually in high registers it's also really fun to use. We also haven't used any vibrato and that's also a fun thing you can try to add at about like 6 hertz. Not too much. You can also, what's a kind of fun thing to do, 
use some delay for the vibrato so only at the long notes you kind of hear it come in and actually play it's like you would slide the guitar at the note you hold a bit longer I have to increase the amount a bit kind of a cool effect as well. And once you have your basic sound, then again, it's actually fun to add some effects. So for example, what I always like to do is having this delay that is basically a chorus, like very, very fast times, a little bit of feedback, and then you just modulate the rate uh, here with the time knob. Super nice effect. And also then a little bit of saturation and here it's some parallel saturation because it's some super strong setting with the hard curve but it just makes the overall sound a little more aggressive. And also adds a little bit more of the high end again. And this is how you can do it. I wish you a lot of fun with trying this with your own synthesizer and be also warmly invited to let me know in the comments down below how this worked for you. And otherwise, I'll also link a video here about making some profit type synth sound that could be interesting to you. And another one here about making some electronic piano type synth sound. And apart from that, I just wish you inspiration with whatever it is that you create and really hope to see you soon again at this channel. Bye.